Good evening. Thank you all for joining tonight's webinar hosted by the Marine Military Academy. My name is Amy and I'll be moderating tonight's session. I'm joined by my host, Dr. John Butler, the Dean of Academics at Marine Military Academy, who will host tonight's webinar here shortly. Before we start, let's take a brief moment to run through some housekeeping items for the webinar and ensure that everyone's comfortable using the technology for tonight. For offering of today's presentation, we recommend you close all other windows on your computer screen and turn them on your computer screen or telephone. See the green control panel at the top of your screen, which is best on there for your reference throughout the course of tonight's webinar. The question is highly encouraged at any time throughout tonight's presentation. You can submit questions to Dr. Ben at any point tonight using the blue chat button located on the green control panel. When you click the button, a window pops up on your screen that will allow you to submit any questions you have during tonight's webinar. So take a moment and test it if you need to. Other participants will not, will not be able to view the questions you submit. So I'll collect your questions throughout the presentation and answer them towards the conclusion of the webinar. If Dr. is unable to answer your specific question due to time constraints, please feel free to contact our admissions department for any further information. If you should your accidentally end for any reason, simply log in using the conference details provided in your registration email. If you have technical difficulties to webinar, please email lbishop at brandextract.com down there at the bottom of the, of the slide, and we'll try to assist you as soon as possible. So by the way, I'll hand it over to Dr. Jeltler now so that he can kick off tonight's session. Thanks. I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. It's really exciting for us to be able to introduce the Marine Military Academy to many of you. And I hope we have a, a great webinar here and, and hope you hang around long enough to ask any questions that you may have at the end of the webinar. I absolutely want to be able to get to you and, and ensure that any questions or comments that you have are fully addressed as part of this process. What we're going to do here tonight is we're going to start off by talking about just some of the general attributes and characteristics of the Marine Military Academy and how I can feel that it can help you better help your son achieve the success that we all know that he's capable of and help propel him into an arena of opportunities that allow him to distinguish himself above his peers in very exciting ways to prepare himself for college and beyond college to set himself up for greatness. Um, as we through with some of that general introduction, we're going to move into what it looks like to be a cadet, cadet Marine Military Academy, and kind of some things they go through, what their day looks like, what all they've got going on, and you'll see just how packed and exciting it is and the opportunities that are available to them to expand themselves beyond the norm, to move beyond what is happening to their friends and their buddies that are back at home sitting on the couch playing a video game or sending a text message to someone, they're going to move beyond that. They're going to step into an exciting environment that allows them the opportunity to develop and grow and achieve the full potential they have within them. Once we're talking about kind of what that day looks like and some of the special activities that are associated with the Marine Military Academy, the environment and the opportunities that are afforded to them, we get into a discussion about summer camp and how that enhances the academic year and gives those guys a head start on transformation toward success. And then we we'll wrap things up, answer your questions, build your comments, and hopefully you're interested enough to go to the website, find more about what we've got going on, show up on our, our, our um, Facebook page and see some of the comments that our parents and our students and friends of the academy have out there already and contact our admissions department. Maybe schedule a tour, come look at us, talk to us in person and see for yourself with your own eyes what we have to offer and what we can do to assist your son toward truly distinguishing himself in a very positive way from his peers, stepping up and moving beyond the ordinary. Let's get here by forging tomorrow's leaders. That's what the Marine Military Academy is all about. We're a active environment that builds upon the foundation that I know that you as parents have already laid for your son. We're in a situation to where we've got the best opportunity possible because you have provided what we need in order 
to help your son achieve success. He's got that great foundation. And you read to him when he was little. You, you provide him all the the toys and stuff that stimulated him and, and connected those synapses in his brain. So we know that we've got something great to work with. He's probably already achieving at a very high level, and we're just looking to take that next step again where he separates himself from the crowd in a very positive way, where we can truly forge tomorrow's leaders, the people that those around him, his peers, in his community, and in his country look to to put them in the next direction wherever we may be, whatever we may be going to do. MMA, Marine Military Academy is a private, all-boys college preparatory boarding school. Right there, you think that it's unique. We've got a single gender environment where these young men are going to have the opportunity to learn in a structured way that's specific to being a guy. We learn differently. I think anybody who's been around boys knows that. We're a preparatory school. We're focused on helping him get into the best schools in the country. We're in an environment to where that is our focus. We're not distracted by trying to be all things to all people. And we're at school, so we're not tied to some test or anything like that. We can focus on what's best for each individual cadet at the Marine Military Academy to make sure that he has the best opportunity as an individual, as a young man, to get where he wants to be. Each cadet at the Marine Military Academy has the opportunity to reinvent themselves when they go through our front gates. Maybe he's a high achiever and he's just looking to take that step, that experience that separates himself from the other high achievers at his school to, to give himself that little bit of a competitive edge. Maybe he's a young man who's not living up to his full academic achievement. We know that. When he walks through those gates, he is who he becomes, who he wants to become. That's really an exciting thing about being at the Marine Military Academy. As a student, a citizen, a contributing member of the team, he becomes a leader, a man that distinguishes himself from his peers. You by what we've got going on with some of these slides right here, that our eyes are all about achievement. We're recognizing them when they do positive things. When they're not doing positive things, you know, living up to that full potential, they're maybe taking a little bit of the easy path. Those as you see up on those slides are drill instructors that have those brown hats on there. That's the surrogate parrot. That's the guy that's going to be there every day, living in the barracks with him, pushing him, motivating him, mentoring him, and encouraging him to be the great success story of the Marine Military Academy. At the Marine Military Academy is what you see right there in front of you. We develop the disciplined, really strong, college-ready young men who are prepared for responsible leadership. That's who we are. The Military Academy is all about facilitating your growth, transformation into tomorrow's leader. Assist him in realizing his full potential. So he'll have all the tools necessary at his disposal to be a success. He'll be the environment that supports that success, that models it, that mentors it. And perfectly honest, he's going to have the tools to be able to confidently navigate that path on his own, to move forward on his own two feet, so that when he leaves the academy and he's accepted into that great university or institution of higher learning, wherever it is that he goes, he's going to be able to not only stand on his own two feet and succeed, but again, distinguish himself, set himself apart from all guys that haven't had this opportunity. Want to send their son to the Marine Military Academy? There are a lot of great reasons, and we're going to talk about a bunch of those tonight. You know, we've always said it's that private college preparatory boarding school for young men. And from 8 through 12, the 
on the principles of the United States Marine Corps, the ideals and the values that have set that organization apart from all other organizations in the world. Honor, courage, commitment, those things, no matter what you do, whether it's academics, business, medicine, law, it doesn't matter. Those are things that lead to success. Those are things that lead to greatness. It's an opportunity that it affords your son the experience, which it will ensure that competitive edge that allows the full potential of your son to come out where it's full on display and everybody will recognize that he has something extra. As for the transformation process, we understand that young men must be inspired towards positive academic achievement and fill and moral growth. We do that every single day. Our instructors, our faculty, our staff, our student leaders become that model for success. Our purpose is to inspire within them the, the great and the full potential and achievement of that potential. Academics will always be a focus for the Marine Military Academy, but academics doesn't stand on its own. We've all these other things. We've got activities and sports. A lot of barracks. Again, that drill instructor, which is so, so important to the mentorship and development of these young men toward the achievement of their goals. All these things are part of it. They went out of the Marine Military Academy with confidence, leadership skills, self-discipline, the courage to do what's right in a timely manner, and the wisdom to know what's right and when to do what's right. It's just to remember, however, that transformation isn't something that happens overnight. So as you're sitting here listening to this, I'm going to ask you to commit to the Marine Military Academy is all about. It's something that's a quick fix. We, we can't do these things, what we're talking about, instilling within them the habits of success, the characteristics of greatness overnight. We can't do it on our own. We need you parents is part of that partnership. The parent, the drill instructor, the faculty and staff, and the young man himself all have to be part of that. Working together toward the achievement and the establishment of very, very high goals. That's what the Marine Military Academy is all about. That's part of the transformation. You have to do any of this without a great atmosphere. And the Marine Military Academy Academy, that's what it is. It's, a, it's an environment of success. It's an environment that breeds and fosters that success. We take extra measures that are necessary to ensure that each young man that comes to the Marine Military Academy has the opportunity to achieve that success. Some slides that you see up on the screen, we young men mentoring other cadets. That's a big part of what we do. We guys like Sergeant Major Kinsley up there in that picture of the inspection that mentor them through that whole process. They demonstrate it. They model it. They show them what leaders do, how leaders act. They put them in positions where they have that opportunity to experience the responsibility of leadership, be in charge of young men, and, and to be honest, it's just making the mistakes of having that drill instructor, that member of the staff, Sergeant Major Kinsley, Colonel Hill, a member of the faculty, one of their teachers that's there to say, wow, there's a better way we could have done this. You're okay. Let's pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and continue to move forward as you continue to grow. Part of the things that we work on as parents and at the Marine Military Academy is ensuring the safety and security of every one of our cadets. And I think it's important enough that we need to take a little bit of a minute here and, and address it. And as you look at that picture up there, you get a view of the Marine Military Academy campus. I mean, I think we've got a great campus. We've got phenomenal facilities. Everything is really well kept up. But one of the big assets of the Marine Military Academy is you'll see the airport up there. You can see the runways and the, the main facility. One of the things that's so great about that is our guys, when they step off that airplane, if 
mom and dad are with them or they're not with them, they're not having to worry about is someone here, you know, in a shuttle to pick me up? Is there a, is, do I have to get a taxi or am I going to get lost or anything like that? They're a couple of hundred yards away from the Marine Military Academy where Major Kins lives, the Commandant of Cadets, myself as the academic dean, their drill instructor, assistant drill instructor, uh, full-time nurses and additional staff are all on campus waiting for them to make sure that they arrive on campus safely, they get on those airplanes to get back home during special meetings and special events safely, care for them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's important for parents to understand that that drill instructor with his family lives in the barracks with his company of young men. That if for whatever reason that young man wakes up in the middle of the night and he's got the sniffles, all he's got to do, just like at home, is walk around and knock on dad's door and there for him. You've got the nurses there on staff full time to make sure that those types of of these are dealt with in a timely manner and that everything is taken care of. You know, we, we've got going on as far as that's concerned. We, we're in an agreement with a great pediatrician out in town so our guys get cut in line privileges so we can get them out there and make sure that they have the opportunity to get seen by a, a physician. We need that level of service. And of course, we've got all the maintenance guys and the counselors and everything you could possibly hope for on campus to ensure that they have the support they need, that, that the air conditioning is running right, that the water is going the way it's supposed to, and that people there are taking care of their every need from the time they wake up in the morning until the time they go to bed at night and all through the night. I mean, everything is there for them to make sure that they're safe, they're secure, they're comfortable, and their needs are met at a very, very high level. Now, go any further without saying who attends the Marine Military Academy. We've got guys from all over the place. We've got guys from all over the United States. We've got cadets that come to us from just all over the world. Mexico, Panama, Colombia, the Ivory Coast, England, Japan. We've got people from really far out places like California, Louisiana. There's no limit to where our young men come to us from. So when they come to the Marine Military Academy, they get a true worldview experience. Not that, you know, Houston's not great and Dallas isn't great and all these places aren't great with a lot of diversity. But guys from China are coming straight off of that China Air flight from Beijing and Shanghai. Our kids who are coming to us from Mexico or coming to us from Monterey and Veracruz. We've got individuals who truly bring a level of cultural diversity and a worldview experience to our cadets that will last them a lifetime. That truly give them a competitive advantage through their friendships, their associations, and their relationships with these young men and working together as teams, as followers and leaders that will Propel them into our global society with a level of preparation that's just difficult to achieve outside of this boarding school type environment. And they all do it again in this structured and disciplined format so that it's maximized, that the learning is truly at the highest levels. I think it's important also to know that more to it than just where they come from. What type of cadet comes to the Marine Military Academy? The type of cadet that comes to the Marine Military Academy is just as diverse. It's not something that's locked in to, you know, every that comes to the Marine Military Academy has a 4.0 GPA. The only thing I can say absolutely equivocally is the Marine Military Academy is not a reform school. We're not a school of kids that have behavioral issues or that in any way, shape, form or fashion or danger to themselves or others. Those young men are not accepted. We don't accept young men that have issues with drugs or anything like that. Our biggest market is young men who want to excel. Our biggest market is young men who want to take the next step to challenge themselves to move beyond the ordinary. That's who the Marine Military Academy is about. 15% of our kids come to us as men 
who are already achieving at phenomenally high levels, they walk in the door exhibiting a lot of the leadership qualities that we expect out of our cadets. They're looking to go to service academies and the MITs and the Stanfords, and they understand that a place like the Marine Military Academy gives them that competitive edge, provides a platform to stand out and above their peers. About 85% of our cadets come to us, and they're young men that are in a situation that ought to be achieving at that level. For whatever reason, they're not. They're making C's and D's when they ought to be making straight A's. Maybe, probably any of your kids, but maybe there's a young man who's made some D's and F's. That's okay, too, because in our environment, we're going to propel them forward. We're going to pull them out of the grass of mediocrity, so to speak. We're going to remove them from that core group of us that's satisfied with the status quo and put the environment where success is celebrated and expected. Guys or individuals that they're also going to be attending the E's and the Stanford's and the University of Texas and the Nervous Academies if they come to us early enough. And with a little bit of luck, maybe they can even get into a great school at Texas A&M. Now, what's a typical day for these guys look like? How do we achieve some of this transformation? We do it by helping them understand what they're capable of and moving them into that expectation for themselves. We master teamwork and we challenge them with competition and it's an ever-present part of their day. We help them understand that success is going to lead to greater responsibility at the Marine Military Academy. They're going to be starting off as a pure follower, that private, that everybody at the academy gets to tell what to do. And they start demonstrating those attributes of great followership. We're going to move them into, into positions of leadership, putting them with responsibility. A little bit at a time, incremental. They'll maybe start as a fire team leader where they've got a couple of guys and then move to a squad leader where they've got more guys. And by the time they're through at Marine Military Academy, they're the battalion commander. He's in a situation where he is able to be 230, 240, 250 men in every aspect of their life. Think about that compared to the school that you went to where you got senior class president and a vice president and a treasurer. By the time a young man completes a couple of years at the Marine Military Academy and he's gone through these different positions of responsibility and rank, he situation that on that college transcript, he marking down all these great things. I was responsible for these guys. I had every aspect of their day as my responsibility. That's huge. They're able to talk about leadership traits and characteristics and attributes that most people as adults aren't even aware of, much less have mastered. That college transcript for him looks above and beyond what it does for the standard normal school. The military academy provides that. It all starts in the barracks. Dr. Brown, I'm going to jump in here. We actually had a great question come in from one of our participants. Um, you know, how many kids are under the supervision of a given drill instructor um, in any, at any one time? I love the question. Right, we've got about 40 to 50 boys during the regular academic school year um, that live in a single barracks. Uh, and of course, it's important for me to remind you that the drill instructor lives in the barracks with those cadets full 24 hours a day. When He's there a lot of the time. The assistant drill instructor is also in that barracks with them, as well as we've got other faculty and staff that are on campus that are helping monitor and ensure that things are going smoothly. And of course, I can't emphasize enough how important our cadet leadership is. You know, we're just talking about the subject of moving these cadets through the different positions of responsibility, and that cadet leadership is so critical to the function of the Marine Military Academy for the development of the young men at the Marine Military Academy. It's an integral part of what goes on in those barracks. You can see these slides going through there. You, you see the mentorship that's gone just in these stills. 
it's amazing what these young men do as they work their way through that, as they have the opportunity to be mentored by great leaders as drill instructors, assistant drill instructors, faculty, and staff. So any given time, you know, to kind of wrap the answer to that question up, um, if there's 30, I mean, 40 to 50 boys in that fact, they've got the drill instructor, the assistant drill instructor, the cadet leadership, and the full faculty and staff there working with them, mentoring them, and pushing and guiding them towards success. You know, while the issue of the barracks, it, you know, it sounds strange coming from the academic dean, but the most powerful learning at the Marine Military Academy, it ends in the barracks. And so I, as proud as I am of our academic program, and I'm, you know, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I've got some great stuff going on there. But you just can't replace the learning that goes on that we just talked about through leadership structure, the follow-up opportunities, all of the things. It's so, so important. They learn teamwork. They, they learn how to get along to accomplish a common goal. You know, I like talking with the boys, and as, as, as we talk, but we understand that out of that 40 or 50 kids that are in that barracks with them, there's 10 or so of them that they just, you know, they think are awesome. They love them. They're great. They're there for life. They're people they will stay connected with forever. There's probably five or 10 of them that, to be honest, they just assume just about the face of the earth, and then the rest of them fit somewhere in between. But they have to get along with every single one of them to accomplish the goals they're set every single day to ensure that those barracks are kept in a cleanly and orderly state, to ensure that everybody's accomplished what they're supposed to, to work on things that they need to from an academic perspective, to ensure that everything is met. Um, as far as the expectations of the drill instructor, the faculty and staff, and the cadet leadership, and it has to happen quickly. Quickly has to happen efficiently. That in and of itself is a learning process. You can see with what we have here that everything in the barracks has its place. There's the shoes have to be lined up just so. The beds are made just a certain way. They're you know leaving your bed messy in the morning. Time management, patient followership, leadership. It all leads to self-discipline, structure, and motivation that lasts with them for a lifetime. The barracks starts very early for these young men. They're up at 6 o'clock. They get things going. They've got to get their day moving. So they've got about 10 minutes that they get out there, that they get motivated, they get the room started to clump, and they get in their, their PT gear. You see a young man there, and it's a yellow shirt and the red shorts. They've got to get outside in about 10 minutes from the time they wake up. Everything's squared away to start their day. They're going to do a little bit of physical activity, not a lot. Some calisthenics, some stretching, maybe run a mile or two, get the blood flowing, wake up. We don't want sleepy cadets at the Marine Military Academy. Then they're going to eat a great breakfast. Our guys are going to have scrambled eggs, fried eggs, omelets, pancakes, biscuits. You they got it there. It's a huge breakfast for them. They can eat all they want. And then they're going to go to a colors formation where we have a raising ceremony. They're going to salute the flag. We're going to put out any information that they need to know. And then we're going to get started with academics. And so I want to talk about that now for, for a little bit. A percent of our graduates at the Military Academy are accepted into the universities and military academies. I excel. What we're about at the Military Academy in regard to academics is ensuring that they have every opportunity to not just be that great leader in the barracks not just be a guy that inspires their peers to greatness to get in the test done that need to be done cooperating as a team, but someone that truly is a scholar, someone that leads in the classroom as well. The set the tone with that. I can't emphasize that enough. That in that distraction free, structured and disciplined environment where they're building that college resume through those leadership responsibilities that also build on that foundation that you have created to become the great student that we know they can be. Ours is individualized and set up for guys. We run 45 minute periods because even as a 43 year old guy with, with degrees that I can't even keep track of all letters on, I have a hard time paying attention 
question for much more than 45 minutes. So we put them in a situation that's geared for success. We're going to start them off in those classes. We're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes reviewing homework. We're going to introduce another 20 minutes of new material. And then we're going to give them 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the day, to get started on their homework for the next evening with that you're in the classroom where questions come up, they've got someone there that can help them out. We're going to drive them to all succeed and push themselves. It's not accepted at the Marine Military Academy. Minimum standards are accepted at the Marine Military Academy. Aren't these guys always taking the core courses, the English, math, the science, the history, foreign language. We're going to encourage them to take Mandarin and Spanish. We're going to put them into programming and great courses that we have to offer on an elective side, like cinematography. Guys are going to be able to take all the advanced placement coursework and dual enrollment where they can earn college credit. So our top 10% guys, our top 20% guys that push themselves have the opportunity to earn over 60 college credit hours at the Marine Military Academy. When they step up and realize their potential, they can walk out of high school is almost a junior in a college environment. That's huge. We focus on the science, the technology, the engineering, the math, the communication skills that are going to lead to success not only in college, but in this rapidly changing, ever moving work environment that we have in this global economy. They're going to be set up for success in that regard. We provide them with small classes. Our, right now, our student to teacher ratio is, is about 1 in 10 to 1 in 12. We're in a situation where even if you're in the back of the class, you're in the front of the class because there's only two rows in our math classrooms. It's a great environment for them to succeed. We encourage them to do great work. We challenge them with laboratory environments. We challenge them with good fashion. Sit down and practice the work. We teach the way many of us were taught, where skill development is emphasized beyond whatever latest educational fad is. We monitor excellence, we support it, but we absolutely positively accept no excuses for anything but pushing themselves towards greatness. Tutoring is a big part of that at the Marine Military Academy. We understand that we're going to have guys who come to us that for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe their kindergarten teacher didn't make them learn their ABCs, or their first grade teacher didn't have them learn the order operations in math or their math facts. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Again, they've walked through those gates. They're reinventing themselves, and our tutorial program is a huge part of that. Every our cadets have the opportunity to go see any teacher on campus that they want to to tutorial assistance. If they're struggling in a math class and they think that someone else can fix better than their teacher, that day, they almost a full bit a day that they can go see anyone else that they want to to assist assistance with. They don't see me and do. I have young men that are going to the classes every day even though they're making straight A's because they understand that that opportunity is available for them to get a head start on their homework in the most difficult class with the teacher that can provide them the best help. Phenomenal opportunity, and it extends over into the barracks with peer tutorials that our, each of our drill instructors sets up with a cadet who is recognized as a superior academic leader and made him the academic NCO or the academic officer in charge of make issues in the barracks from the cadet perspective. They coordinate study groups. They coordinate tutorial assistance, all kinds of stuff that's available to them outside of the classroom in the evenings, in barracks, in the library. There's a wealth of help that's available to them. Faculty, staff, and students are standing by to not trap them in a track, but to move them forward to that college readiness opportunity and experience. It's really, really a neat system. Communication is a big, big part of what we've got going on at the Marine Military 
Academy makes this whole thing work. I mean, if I did the number of times I've seen parents who say, gosh, I didn't know this was going on in my, my son's school. I didn't know that he was struggling with this or that. Now replaced with a communication link between the drill instructor and the teacher. That drill instructor who every day is mentoring and fostering excellence in your son. He knows what assignments have been assigned and are due today, tomorrow, next week. He knows whether that man did his homework, whether he did it to an unsatisfactory standard, whether he did it to the highest standard. Every day he can follow his grades and every day he's communicating with the teachers and knows what's going on. It's a huge thing there that allows us to keep the men on track and moving. Our guys are connected to their parents. Our faculty, our staff, our drill instructors are connected to their parents not only through the traditional means of email and and phone calls, which we, we welcome and have a, a requirement that we get back to parents in 24 hours, but also through some of the newer social media that's out there, like Facebook and Twitter and all of this stuff that's going on, where parents can actually engage in what's going on on a daily basis at the Marine Military Academy. Mr. Bell, I think it's funny that you bring up Facebook. Um, what is actually the uh, MMA policy for Facebook? And Think cell phones, anything like that, any kind of communication devices. You know, those those are great questions. Our cadets, um, well, a different experience there. Um, understanding that that we've got those guys who are making really great grades. They've got a 3.5 and above. They're able to go over to our cadet activity center in the evenings during study time, and or over to the library, different places, and access. Facebook, email, things like that, to communicate, to interact socially, and do other things because they've demonstrated the responsibility and the characteristics that we would expect of someone to manage that wisely along with their responsibilities in the barracks and in the classroom. Those guys who are still struggling with some of that, though, with the self-discipline of managing their time well, the time management, the, the studying that they need to do and, and those types of things, we still limit during the week those distractions. So, so on school nights and during the school periods, they have that access to Facebook and email and cell phones. Weekend, however, assuming that you know everything's going well, they haven't gotten in trouble somehow, and we've removed that privilege, all of us are able to get you know and have that access: email, cell phones, Facebook. Um, us, of course, you know. We, we've talked with the parent, and for whatever reason, they have some objection to do that. And we manage it and work with the parent. Again, it's a team process to ensure that the son um, has the, the best um, opportunity and experience to engage in these social media environments, but also to bounce that with the studying and things that they need to do. Wow. The, you know, this next slide is one of the things that I can get most excited about, which is college placement. College placement, again, it, it's what we're about. You see Ms. Ferris there working with cadets, and she starts working with young men starting in the eighth grade. I mean, we have eighth graders that are receiving college counseling from full-time college placement counselor. And I say counselor, and a lot of people, they think back to that experience like I had when I was in high school where I called down for my five-minute college placement counseling session in my entire four years. Maris is there not because she's trying to schedule kids or she's trying to talk to kids because they're upset because Fluffy the cat got sick or whatever it is. We got people that do that. But Ms. is there to start with them the moment they step through our gates as an eighth grader or a ninth grader or a tenth grader, whatever they come to us to start developing college awareness and, and all types of things and college readiness skills to the point they're a senior, that she's doing just like what mom and dad would do at the kitchen table, sitting down with them, talking to them, working with their English teachers on the development of their essays and all those types of things that are necessary, helping them pull together that resume that demonstrates all the leadership characteristics that they've developed through all those different jobs that they've had as they work their way through the rank structure, all the expenses they've had in community service and all those things. She, 
she pulls all that together, works with them on it, and it ensures that that packet gets out to the universities of their choice so they have the greatest opportunity for success. She works with them on scholarship opportunities and making sure that they get a dorm room, all those things. But remember, it starts with them in eighth grader or whenever they come to us with personality inventories and interest inventories and assistance with SAT preparation and ACT preparation, maybe taking the TOEFL exam or, or different examinations that allow them to highlight their levels of mastery and earn college acceptance, all these things are part of Ms. Ferris does. She moves them beyond who I was, that guy who really didn't even know what the world had to offer. We're choosing colleges and universities not based on where their friends went or who won a national championship in football last year, but based on what's a best fit for them, their skills, their interests, and what their personality provides best fit. An important part of this process, I think, um, is being able to communicate and track grades for the student and for parents. And we actually had a question come through about that. So could you talk a little bit about how could that are able to track their grades? Absolutely. I mean, kids have constant feedback from us on grades. Parents have constant feedback from us on grades. They can get online and they see in real time what their cadet's grade is in every single class. It's something that, that is a really powerful tool. Of course, your own instructors can take that to another level and they get even additional feedback that really gets down into the weeds with that and that actually gets posted in the barracks and is available for counseling not only in, the, in our counselor's office and the college counselor's office but with the drill instructor as well where he's able to monitor that, counsel them areas of improvement and we're, we're talking about these things. I think it's important to bring out that six times a year our drill instructors, our teachers and the cadet all get together and they conference about what's going right, what could be better, how do we do a better job in serving the cadets' needs, and making sure that everybody's on the same page to ensure that they have the best opportunities for success. So continue on, you're seeing more of what we've got going on with the college placement room. And you know, I've been embarrassed that we see that University of Texas flag up there, but we'll move beyond that. We, we really push these guys towards excellence. I don't want anybody getting a bad deal with that there, but what what we got going on here I think is unique and you'll see these young men are working together as they go over and Maris has them create a college notebook. Again, I, I can't overemphasize the importance of finding a good fit for every one of these young men so that they show up at a university that meets their needs and puts them in the best opportunity opportunity, best environment for success. You know, we're not just about great leadership in the barracks. We're not just about being scholars. There's that physical element that also supports the academics and the leadership. It's huge for us, for our young men to be required to participate every day in an activity period. This is where our varsity sports and unique activities get into play. And we've got so many things to offer them. Not only do we have the normal basketball, football, baseball, track, uh, you know, swimming, diving, all those things that you would expect where they're going to learn the teamwork. They're going to have the opportunities to demonstrate that leadership out there on the athletic fields. But we've also got unique activities such as um, rifle team and drill team and boxing and jiu-jitsu and rock climbing and cycling and, and oh, gosh, I can't even think of all of it off the top of my head. We've, we've got ton of things that are out there that appeal to everybody's interest. It teaches them all the things that you would expect from self-discipline, teamwork, dis all these things that are part of being a great guy, being a great citizen, being a great leader and a contributor to society. Um, there's so many things that we've got going on there in the way of Boy Scouts and aerospace. I mean, let's talk about our aerospace program for a little bit. That's really exciting. Our young men have the opportunity for to get their private pilot's license. We young men finish our program where they're not only a single-engine private pilot, 
but they the certification is necessary to instruct other people in how to fly. They move beyond the ordinary. And you want to talk about something that looks great on a college resume, besides those great grades, besides all that leadership experience where it shows that someone that's engaged in life. But the kind of a sports team, they're participating in something that maybe in a school of 2,500, they wouldn't have the opportunity to even make the team. Here, they're maybe the captain of that team. They've also got their private pilot's license. They're, they're certified in scuba. And they can say they've gone out offshore and done rig dives and, and, and all kinds of things like that. They're the one that when that college admissions counselor is looking at that resume, looking at their experiences, they say, I would have done that. We need this kid. Something that moves beyond the other things that you normally experience. We've got National Honor Society and Key Club and, and Rotary Interact and all these things that lead to further form training and opportunities for them to experience discipline, leadership, fellowship, and are truly honing that young man as an individual of distinction, as an individual that sets himself apart from his peers, that guy that's sitting on the couch playing a video game or sending a text message to somebody that we don't even know. He's creating real friends and real relationships in that barracks that will the network that will forever back on. It's something not talking to somebody with his fingers that he doesn't even know but thinks is his friend. He's talking to real people in a real environment that fosters success, that fosters development, and then that separates him from everybody else that he will be competing with in a very, very positive way. It's a big part of what goes on at the Marine Military Academy. You know, I have people say, wow, that's all packed in. You've got a great school year. You've got a lot of stuff going on. What do you do on the weekends? Well, what happens on the weekends is just as important. Everybody needs the opportunity to let their hair down and kind of have some fun and ratchet the structure down just a notch. And about half of our kids on any given weekend that are aged in a Boy Scout project or a camp out or in a Rotary Interact Leadership Forum or they're out with the with tuba divers or they're with their varsity team in an athletic event. But we've all got a bunch of guys that maybe they're going out and they're grabbing a double meat, double cheeseburger at Whataburger or they're going to watch the latest movie that came out with their buddies. Heading over to the bowling alley, they're being kids. Day, starting at noon, we give these guys, if they've earned it, by what they've done in the barracks, what they've done in the sports fields, what they've done in the classroom, we, we buy a Liberty bus, let them go out and experience the movies and the bowling alleys and the, the, the all the stuff that's going on in the community that allows them to let their head out a little bit and demonstrate that responsibility, that respect for themselves and others. And it promotes them in a way that really can only be done by providing them that lesson and structure that we experience on the campus every day. There's so much that goes on. And then, of course, they start their age. They, they come back to the barracks either at 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, depending on age, because once again, they come into that environment that supports them towards their success. You know, the community to us, since we're talking about that, is huge too because we're these young men understand that it's not all about them, that there's a whole world out there that we want them to be a part of and engage in. We our young men participate in community service, not because we make them, but because they start understanding there's something greater than self. It's a big part of being a good citizen that they have privilege and opportunity that so many people don't. And the stuff that they participate is phenomenal. They, they contribute thousands of hours every single year into community service. They're doing 
our day tree plantings and beach cleanups and, and all the things like that, moving into going to see um, senior citizens and, and their homes and in assisted living environments. They're going um, and being hungry at Thanksgiving and other special times of the year. And one of the very most favorite things that they do is they participate in a Christmas opportunity where an orphanage down at the Marine Military, down at the Marine Military Academy, has these young children that don't have, you know, what we think is just a, a basic everyday right is parents. Our kids shine in that environment. They dress up as the Grinch and Santa Claus and Santa's helpers and all these different things. And each of them sponsors one of those young people and provides a great Christmas for them. Not only great for that kid, that, that, that young orphan, but the transformation that occurs in that cadet is they understand how to elevate themselves by helping those individuals in the community is phenomenal. It moves them and helps them understand that by giving back, they get more. And to be blunt, having that on that college resume doesn't hurt either. Those are some of the special events that we've got at the Marine Military Academy. We're proud of all these things. We've got a lot going on that they can participate in. That birthday ball and guest speakers. You, you see there um, some, you know, one of the guest speakers we had, Spring Fling, where parents come in, and H.M. Smith dinner, where they get to engage with community leaders from around the country, and of course, graduation. Let's talk about a couple of these. Birthday ball is one of my absolute favorites. That occurs in November, and moms and dads get to come up. It's our big parent weekend. For some of you, it may be the first time you've seen your son since he got dropped off at this. And the pride that you're going to see in him is he's making those great grades. He's distinguishing himself in all aspects of a cat life and in life in general. And much to have that first mother son dance that starts off that evening's festivities is phenomenal. You, you can imagine the pride in the young man and the parents that occur in that. And it's an opportunity for him to take you around and see all the things that he's been doing in the classroom and, you know, rolling and rock climbing and doing the Marine Corps obstacle course and meeting his buddies, his friends from around the world. And, of course, my favorite is the Military Academy graduation. I'm going to ask you to think about yourself on that day sitting there in the auditorium. I get the privilege of walking up there with the guest speaker, the guest honor, uh, the president of the academy, the drill instructors of the faculty, and stepping out in front of you and saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present the Marine Military Academy graduating class of 2012. And young walks in those aisles in his dress blues with his white cover in his hand, and he falls into those seats. He goes off the stage. He shakes the guest speaker's hand. He isn't close anything. He is finishing something. As he hugs his drill instructor for the last time, he's opening a chapter where he is prepared better than anybody that will stand beside him when he gets to that university or institute of higher education. Is what the Marine Military Academy is all about. Let's summer camp for a little bit. Summer camp is awesome. From the moment they show up at our gate, summer camp it's go, go, go. Everything about summer camp is about adventure, personal growth, the development of confidence and self-discipline. It's a phenomenal experience for these guys. This camp is for young men from 12 years old to 18 years old. As long as they haven't graduated high school, we want them in summer camp. The opportunity with a distraction of textbooks and teachers for them to start experiencing some of the great environmental attributes of the Marine Military Academy. They're going to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and they're going to go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and everything in between is going to be outside doing things. It's developing teamwork, confidence, self-discipline, and skills. They're going to be doing the ropes confidence course, low ropes confidence, rock climbing, rappelling, the mud course, paintball. 
um, be playing kickball and softball and flag football. They're going to be doing stuff like that every single day, all day long. The only time that they're going to take a break is to eat one of those great big breakfast, lunch, and dinners that we've talked about. They're going to be doing awesome things all day that help them challenge themselves and realize what they can achieve beyond the ordinary. That transfers. I get excited about summer camp as the academic dean because every bit of that moves into the classroom for me. When jumped off of that telephone pole that's 30 foot high that they didn't think they could ever get on top of, that they thought fear would prevent them from getting to, and do it, and they do it again, and before long it, it's not only not scary, it's fun. When algebra causes them to question themselves, that, you know what, I can accomplish this. I can tackle it and I can beat it. They learn to set goals and move on to limitations that they set in their own mind, to break down those barriers and move to greatness. That's what summer camp is all about. And it's done in a high intensity, fully adventurous environment. It's awesome. You see some of these pictures there that just demonstrate what I'm talking about. I think another important thing to bring up about summer camp is we bring 40, 50 of our best cadets back every single year for summer camp to help lead summer camp. They are the cadet instructors, the cadet leaders. And even though the drill instructor and assistant drill instructor and staff is still all there to make sure that everything goes the way it's supposed to and supervises it, once again, our cadets have the opportunity to step to the front of the crowd and help these young men overcome those challenges and fears and set new goals and new expectations for themselves. Once again, we reinforce that by helping others, they move themselves forward. We create the least for tomorrow. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. The academic year, the school year, and I, I forgot. Y'all let me forget. ESL, our English as a Second Language program, ties into summer camp. That's a big part of what we do. Our guys that come to us that maybe need some work with English development during a regular day from 9 o'clock to about 4 o'clock, they get to work on the development of English so they're prepared for the academic year. The rest of the time from 6 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, they're doing all those other great summer camp activities get the same summer camp experience. All our summer campers having to participate in the introductory process as part of the school year. A huge advantage to them from day one to walk in and not be um, having to learn who is in charge and how do I face left and face right and how do I make this corner on my bed and which order my clothes go in and all those things. All that's taken care of as part of the summer camp process. As we for tomorrow's leaders, it's important to understand that they gain management training that most of us don't even see until our 30s and 40s. That we truly are preparing disciplined, morally strong, college ready young men prepared for responsible leadership. Thank you very much, Butler. That's great stuff. Um, now we're just going to take a few minutes before we close to answer some of the questions that we've collected from you all throughout today's webinar. Um, before we, I'd like to thank all of of you for submitting thoughts and questions this evening in our session. It's been great. great. Um, if you're able to answer any of your questions in the limited amount of time we have left, or you'd like to speak to someone and MMA to discuss your questions further, please feel free to contact the admissions department. Um, that's why we're there. But um, with, we'll kick off tonight's question um, with what's come in. Um, how do you know if my son will fit in at MMA, and what happens if he doesn't? Um, Beige boys. At the end of the day, uh, they fit in. So they come in, um, some of them aren't as excited about the opportunity as others, but truly success is infectious. That peer environment that I was talking about, where they're trying to, to motivate each other to succeed, is something all of them want to be a success deep down inside of them. And finally, they're in an environment that supports that, that helps encourage them towards that instead of ridicules. Them for it. And they will fit in. Uh, I can just 
say we have the experience with dealing young men with, with moving beyond any of those initial adjustment issues. That's not going to be a problem. That's great. Um, another point that I think is really important to cover here, a question that we had in was what kind of financial assistance is available? Financial assistance is very important to us. As the chief financial officer for the academy, I don't want to see any cadet not be able to come to the academy for financial reasons. And we work those issues on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we don't have to paint that with a real broad brush. Financial aid is available. Um, we have an endowment. We have scholarship opportunities, as well as I can work with customized payment plans to ensure that everybody has the reasonable support. Fortunately, I can't make it to where the Marine Chair Academy is free, but just of our ability, we will work with parents to ensure that if they have the need, Need, we will make sure that they have the opportunity to come into the Marine Military Academy if possible. That's great. We had one more question come through. Um, what issues are involved if my son starts attending MMA as a junior? Is it late or is it a start to get him integrated? How does that work? You know, I'd love to have everybody come in as an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's not our reality. And we get juniors that come to the Marine Military Academy. You know, it's important to note that their ninth grade and tenth grade years are already in the books. Those are logged in the record. I can't do anything about that. So there may be some, some rules that have been closed. There may be some opportunities that have been lost. But we still got that junior year and senior year that we can work with him to ensure that, again, he gets on the right path. That he has the opportunities available to him to achieve his full potential. And so I'm always happy to see a junior come in the door. I prefer to see an eighth grader come. But if I was a junior, we'd certainly more than capable of working with him to ensure that wherever he may go, whatever his vocation and vocation is, that we put him in the best opportunity to succeed and again, distinguish himself from his peers. That's good. Last question before we, uh, before we jump off here. When time do you come visit? Anytime. I'd love to see you come. Optimally, when we've got school in session and you can interact with our cadets that are there, see firsthand what's going on in my classrooms, in the barracks, in the back 40 where all great activities occur, all that. But, you know, whatever your schedule is, if you contact admissions, if you contact the, anybody at the Marine Military Academy, we'll make sure that we're there and provide you a tour and give you the opportunity to put eyes on the campus and what we've got going on. If, if you need to schedule a visit, you can get online and schedule it. You can call us at our admissions department. Um, that, you know, make emails, phone calls, uh, post express. We don't care. Dr. Dr. Is, there, um, is there an application deadline next year? You know, I'll tell you, if you're looking at summer camp, get your application in quick because summer camp fills up. We max out the school year. We, so I'd hate to see you get put on a waiting list because you delayed. For the school year, you know, the sooner the better just because of the fact that part of that process is getting teacher recommendations, counselor recommendations, transcripts, and a lot of schools close down in the summer. So even though we can probably still have room for it if you're applying in July or right after summer camp, it makes that process so much more difficult on you because you're going to have to gather some of these documents and, you know, maybe the people that you need to get them aren't going to be as readily as available as they are in the school year. Is that all the time we have for tonight, Dr. Butler? Do you have any final words before we sign off? What I want to say is that you can't fully experience Marine Military Academy through a webinar. I'm going to encourage you to come down, visit the Academy, talk with our cadets that are there today that are experiencing firsthand, talk with our faculty and staff, and be experience firsthand what we have to offer. Come visit us in an on-site uh, presentation. Do all those things. But if at all possible, go beyond the Facebook, go beyond visiting the website and come see us because we love to host you for a visit, have you come down. And I promise you, if you'll do that, you'll get a feel for the Marine Military Academy and you'll be booked. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Butler. My pleasure.